So welcome back. This is part two of a series of cutting a log face. In part one, we picked out a log and surfaced the back underside. In this part, what we're gonna do is set up the cam software and then rough out the face in the bark side. So let's get right to it and go to the cam software. So here we are in the cam software. To do this, we are using a spire. You will need to use a spire or something similar like this to be able to model this correctly for machining. The first thing I've done is set up our material. So I've got the same dimensions as the log and I've set the work zero to be the centre of the log and at the bottom of the material. So we go to the drawing tab, you can see I've got that set up there. I've also got the thickness set to the same thickness as the log. The first thing I have to do is model the profile of the log. To do this I've sketched an outline showing the profile of the log. I've just roughly guessed this by looking at the profile in front of me and drawing it on the screen. And I think that is a good estimation of what I've done there. And then the second thing to do is draw two rail lines down the left hand side and the right hand side of our material setup. And then using our profile and these rail lines, we can use the, um, the sweep rail um, tool in Aspire to extrude that profile along the rails. And then if you go to the 3D view, we can see now we have got the extruded profile of our log in Aspire. The next thing I want to do is model a bowl insert into this log. So if I show this centre layer, what I have done is drawn this ellipse. And if I go to the modelling functions, and then I used the create shape from vector outline, and then using that function, this will create our inset bowl, as you can see there. What this does, because we've got the log profile underneath it, automatically will adjust this bowl inset to match the profile of the log, and this is a really nice feature of the spire. And this will come handy when we come to do the center face as well. Right, on to the next section. To get the center's model, what we need to do is go to File, Import, and Import 3D Model. You can just get a standard face off the internet, but what I have decided to do is use one from the standard Vectric library of models, and now you've got a center head in there. So when I import it, you will get options to set the height, location, base height, and how it will carve out on your model. So when you set these, and after you press apply, it will automatically put it onto your model and adjust it to the curvature of your, of your previous components. So in this case, it's adjusted for the curvature of our bowl in the Y direction, and also the profile of our log in the Y direction. This is a really nice feature of Aspire, and it makes importing models and setting them inside other models really easy. And then after I imported it, what I did, I went to 2D view, selected the center's head and then just adjusted the size and position to fit nicely inside our bowl. And this has the finished outcome of looking like this. All I need to do is now set up the cutting toolpaths. The first cutting toolpath we want to set up is our roughing toolpath. So I've got this selected here. I've selected a 1 8 inch extended reach cutting bit, square end, and in the model boundary, we want to go to selected vectors because what we don't want to do is be machining the log profile as we've already got that. So I've just selected the vector we made for the bolt outline. I've selected 0.5mm machine allowance and then rast it in the x direction. And then just press calculate on that. As you can see, that has generated our tool paths and it has avoided the rest of the, the log. As I said earlier, I've already got the profile set up. Next thing is to set the finishing tool path. In here, I've just set to a ball end extended reach of 1 8 inch. Again, we want to machine to selected vectors so we're not machining the whole log. And then I've just set offset strategy for machining this. And then just calculate on that. So then, so now I've got the tool path set. What I need to do is save them, save them individually onto our computer. So now they've been saved, let's go down to the machine, set up our log, clamp it down correctly, and get some cutting going. So with the cam software done, what we need to do is clamp down our material. So we're going to clamp it down, surface face down on our spoiler board, and we also need to make note 
that we had a correct orientation to match our cam software. So I've got it set up like this way with the more um, shallow angled on the right hand side if facing forwards. So let's get right onto it and get this clamped down. So the material is now clamped down. What I've done is looked in between these two MDF sheets, front and back, and I've secured it using the L bracket front and back. I've also marked the center of the log, and what I need to do now is set the work zero at this center. So, I've got the cutting bit directly above this center point, and now what I need to do is reset the X and reset the Y axis. So that's done. What I need to do is now set the Z work zero. I'm not gonna set it at the top of the material, I'm gonna set it at the spoiler board height. The reason for doing this is that we're gonna be changing a bit after we've done the roughing cut, and if I have it set at the top, I won't be able to re-reference that after I've changed a bit. So I set the bottom, and I can easily re-reference that to our spoiler board again. So I'm just going to do that now. So I've got the Z0 now set. What I quickly need to do is now drill a pilot hole to relocate the machine just in case the work position is ever lost. The work position should hold itself during power cycles, so even though that centre point is going to be cut away and we're going to be changing the bit, we shouldn't lose the XY position. But just in case someone else comes on the machine and messes it around, I've got a point where I can relocate it. So I've noticed that, noted down the position of this point relative to the work position, which is Z0, Y0, X minus 109 mil. So what I'm gonna do now is just draw, drill a hole ahead there, just in case we ever need to relocate the machine. So I'm gonna do that now. Holes now drilled, and just for information, I just drilled that using the job commands for the z-axis. So that's now done. Just one final thing I need to do. As we're cutting quite deep, what I need to do is just check that when we cut right down the sides here, the machine's not going to hit itself anywhere. So I'm just going to jog the machine over to this point here, and just check there's enough clearance. Now set our job command to only one mil this time. Just looking there, I can see this end plate will hit the top of my log. However, it will, should be all right because as I set up in the camera program, we're not actually cutting right down to that side. We're only cutting that middle bowl section. So I'm just gonna just test it in that position. It should be about there, and there it will clear. So I'm 100% sure now that the job we're gonna do is not gonna hit anywhere and ruin our job. So all I need to do now is just raise the z-axis. And then touch the dust chute and then we can just send our rough and file to the machine. One thing I haven't mentioned is actually this cutting bit. What we're using is a 1 8 inch up cut. And I've got the stick out to be set to 42 mil. That's two mil higher than the log we're using. So we can be sure it's gonna cut everywhere it needs to cut. So the roughing cut is now complete. As you can see, the roughing cut has missed off some bark on this left hand side. What I'm hoping is that the finishing cut will remove this as there's another 0.5mm of material to take off. I hope you found this video informative and join us back in part three where what I do is doing a finishing cut, apply some finishes 
and uh, chop off these ends to make it a final product that look great in your home. Please subscribe to our channel and like our video.